Well, look, it was Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, and uh, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily or truly I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see, to be in heaven, we've got to become as little children. We've got to become dependent upon God. Realize that our souls need salvation, that we cannot save ourselves by any way, shape or form. Any amount of good works will never ever do anything to get us to heaven. We need to understand that. We've got to come the way God has made. And the way God has made is through the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God. The one who was crucified upon the cross, he wants to be your saviour this afternoon. When will you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you become a child of God? For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe well unto the world because of offences, for it must needs be that offences come, but woe well unto that man by whom the offence cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life whole or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. What it's really meaning is this. Don't let anything stop you from being saved, from becoming a child of God by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is urgent. We need to get right with God. As a result of putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Without that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going down to hell, my friend. God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why I'm here again this other. To give you another opportunity of getting right with God, of receiving forgiveness for your sins. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee, it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having uh, two eyes to be cast into hell fire or into the lake of fire. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. So obviously, first of all, we've got to realize we're lost. Hell deserving sinners. That's what we deserve. That's the only thing that we deserve. Hell and the lake of fire because of our sins. And yet, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, that is on Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? In other words, are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on your way down to hell? God does not want that. He wants to stop your mad career down to hell. He wants to stop you in your tracks. 
that you might understand your sinfulness before him and our inability to save ourselves. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. So you've got to understand that we are lost. And the Lord Jesus Christ has come to find us. That's why he came. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And that means he came to save you and he came to save me. For all have sinned and come sure of the glory of God. Because of that we're heading down to hell and God does not want that to you, my friend. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ had to sacrifice himself upon the cross. He had to shed his precious blood upon the cross in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. So what do you need to do? Come in repentance toward God. That is, a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul be saved. That's what God wants. Very simple. And that's why most people are missing out on God's salvation. Because they don't understand how simple it really is. It's not a matter of keeping the commandments or anything like that. It's a matter of putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Have your sins been taken away? Are you right with God? If you were to happen to die right now, where would you be? Would you be in heaven? Or would you be down in hell? God wants you to be in heaven with himself for all eternity, my friend. But you cannot be there apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who was crucified for us upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to scriptures and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour, my friend. He wants to save your soul for a long and lost eternity. It's either heaven or hell. Very simple. And your destination depends on what you do with Jesus Christ, my friend. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How think you if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go up into the mountains and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it verily or truly I say to you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. And we've got to understand we've gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him. But as the Lord God has laid on upon the Lord Jesus Christ the iniquity of us all. And he suffered on the cross for you and for me because of our sin. He himself has no sin. And yet he was made sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him uh, be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican or a tax collector. Verily or truly I say to you, 
Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. It really means having been bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, or having been loosed in heaven. Again I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, this is what God wants. He wants us to gather unto the precious name of his beloved Son alone, without any denominational ties whatsoever. This is what God wants for each and every one of his dear children, the children of God, those who have been born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft or how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him to seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of uh, heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his servants, uh, sorry, fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. Then when his fellow servants saw what was done, uh, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that thou all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou have also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth. In other words, his Lord was very angry and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Matthew chapter 19. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? You know, is it, is it right to, for a man to uh, divorce his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read? That, which, uh, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. Notice that carefully. Male and female, there's nothing else but that. It's either male or female. God created Adam and Eve. And said, for this man shall a ma- uh, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife 
and they twain, or they two, shall be one flesh. Therefore they are no more twain, or they're no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you or allowed you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away, doth commit adultery. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save or except they to whom it is given. And there were some eunuchs which were born, uh, so born from their mother's womb. And there were some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. In other words, the disciples told them off. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't want to be bothered with his little children. Of course, that's a load of rubbish. He does. He loves the little children, same as he loves uh, men and women. He loves men and women and boys and girls. He displayed that when he sacrificed his son upon the cross. When his son was made sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. But Jesus said, suffer little children, in other words, permit or allow little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what, shall good, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he's wanted to do some good works to receive everlasting life. Well, it doesn't work that way. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to receive eternal life because of the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. That's the only way that we can enter into heaven. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honour thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily or truly I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily or truly I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, 
in the new generation, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be third. You know, we need to understand, we need God's salvation. And we need God's salvation urgently. We need it now. If you die without the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour, you will be in hell, my friend. God does not want that for you. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Again, repentance is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So it's either heaven or hell, depending on what we've done, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Make a wise choice this hour, my friend. Come to Christ. Put your faith in Him. The one whom to know is life eternal. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. And uh, thanks for listening.